Okay, so it was question 4B. They told you in that question that you need to find the first three terms of the arithmetic progression, which we say yesterday is a linear pattern. So it's a linear name, arithmetic progression, linear pattern, of which the seventh term is three. Do you see that that is what I wrote in that first line there? I just wrote that term seven is three. And the 12th term is negative. <clears throat> then remember, we are working with this formula because it's a linear pattern, it's an arithmetic progression. This is the formula that we are working with. <clears throat> All right, so term n is a plus n minus one. So if it's term seven, then n is seven. So a plus seven minus one b. A plus six B is equal to three. All right, the three is the value that we gave us. Then we do the same thing with term 12. If it's term 12, then N is 12. So it's A plus 12 minus 1 D, which is 11 D. All right, so A plus 11 D is negative three. Then from here, like I said yesterday, you need to recognize if at any time, all right, not necessarily in just this type of question or just this section. If at any point you have two equations and you need to solve for two variables, then you're going to have to solve those two equations simultaneously. So you could have decided to make A the subject in the second equation, which was this I made A the subject in the first one. So I said here that A will be 3 minus 60 if I move that plus 60 over. Then I took this expression for A now and I replaced the A in the second equation with that expression, which then allowed me to just work with the right side so of the insult with D. So negative 60 plus 11D is 5D. And then we have negative 3 minus 3, which is negative 6. And then we must divide by 5. All right. So D is negative 6 over 5. Yes, sorry that it's such a strange number, okay, but we also don't need to be or shouldn't be put off by that if it is possible. Then we found our D value, sorry, I'm not sure why it's doing that all the time. Then we can use that value of D and we can substitute it back into our almost like formula for A. Which will allow us to solve for a, so we have three minus six times d, which is negative six over five. That gives us a value of fifty-one over five. So now we have a and d. Remember, a is the first term, right? So if they're asking us for the first three terms, we've already found the first one, a is fifty-one over five, and then from there we need to minus six over five. We need to subtract six over five to get term two. We need to subtract six over five again to get term three. Right? Any questions there? Now, guys, if you are seeing that you're getting these answers and you think, oh, guys, I just want to double check, they did give you the value of term seven, right? So you can actually keep minus in six over five and see if you actually end up with three as your seventh term. Okay, that would be a way to check. If you want to go even further, you can go to term 12 and see if you're also getting negative three. All right, but that is something that you can do. You don't have to, but just yeah, if you're getting an answer that looks kind of funny like this, you can always. Any questions at this point, guys? All right, we are going to do one more kind of application example of this a plus n minus one d formula. <clears throat> So, yeah, yesterday we wrote application examples and then we said number one. So, I suppose we can now just say application example two, I suppose. That would be fine.
Okay, so we're saying here the first three terms of an arithmetic sequence, sequence and regression, is going to be the same thing. Or uh, 3 p minus 4, 4 p minus 3, and 7 p minus 6. All right, so I'm just going to rewrite those three terms. <coughs> And now they are asking in this first question, they're asking us to actually calculate the value of P. Now, guys, P has to be a number that if you actually substitute it into all three of these terms, it will give you an arithmetic sequence, right? A linear pattern. So now we need to think of a way in which we can actually solve for P. Now, what do we know? What is the defining thing that makes a number like this is arithmetic sequence? <laughs> Constant difference, right? The constant first difference. So, guys, that is why they're telling us that it's an arithmetic sequence. Remember, last year we also did quadratic patterns, and later on next week we're going to be doing geometric sequences. All right, so we're not only going to be working with arithmetic sequences, so they will have to tell you which type it is in a question like this. So, they're telling us that it is an arithmetic sequence, so that we know that we can assume that there is a constant first difference. Right? All right, how do you actually find the first difference? What calculation do you normally do when you're looking at another pattern? Mm -hmm. Yes, correct. Yeah, that's exactly what we're going to do. I just want to show you guys this. When we looked at this first example yesterday, right? We have 4, 7, 10. Then we said, okay, from 4 to 7, we're adding 3. From 7 to 10, we're also adding 3. But you could actually have said, what is term 2 minus term 1? 7 minus 4 is 3, right? And what is term 3 minus term 2? 10 minus 7 is also 3. That is actually how you get the constant difference. You want to maybe just add if you have some space here. Underneath where we wrote constant first difference was 3. The difference is term 2 minus term 1. <coughs> right? 7 minus 4. That gives us 3 in that case. But we will get the same answer if we take term 3 minus term 2. Right? Because it's an arithmetic sequence. So the difference between the first two terms will be the same as the difference between the second and third term. Now, that is actually what we're going to use, right? We're going to use this almost as a formula. We're going to take one term minus the one that comes before. That will give us the constant difference. Then, because we'll get the same answer if we take the third term minus the second term, we can put those two in the Right? Did you all copy this out? Okay, here yeah. I'm just going to add here again constant first difference, and we remember that that is term two minus term one, and that will be equal to term three minus term two. All right, that is actually what we are going to do. I hope that that makes sense. That's right? a constant first difference. It is a constant first difference because it's an arithmetic sequence. So now we're going to say term two minus term one. So that will give us the first first difference, right? It's first one here. So we're going to say four p minus three minus three p minus four. Remember, when you are subtracting multiple terms, you have to put those terms in brackets, please. I will just add here underneath this that this is term two. Minus term one. That's what I'm doing here. I'm taking the second term and I'm subtracting that first term from it. And because this is an arithmetic sequence, I know that the difference between term one and two will be the same as the difference between term two and three. So I'm going to take the third term minus the second term. So 7p minus 6 
third term minus the second term, which is 4p minus 3. <clears throat> So right here underneath equals term three minus term three. Not easy that we actually have an equation in terms of p. We can solve the p in that equation. You let on your arm, please solve the p there. <coughs> Do that calculation first. You're going to multiply the brackets out, get all the p's on the one side and the numbers on the other. Okay, do we have an answer? <clears throat> all right, there you go. You're working with a difficult line. You maybe took some steps. Maybe you took your P's all to the left hand side and numbers to the other side. It's fine. As long as you get into P equals two, yes? Okay, good. <clears throat> if you did it, then just check. Maybe you just made a sign error yeah. and you moved something across. Maybe you did something out there. And you can write down the next question. Turn in the value of the 16. All right, guys, if we need to find the 16th term, remember it's an arithmetic sequence. So, what is my term formula? Okay, good. I'm hearing the right stuff. It's A plus B minus 1B. So, if it's the 16th term, it's term 16. So, that can be written as A plus 15B, right? If it's term 16, then n is 16, so 16 minus 1 is 15. Now, the reason why I've written it like that is because do we actually have a and b? A is the first term, yes. Do we have the first term anyway? We have the first term in terms of p, but do we have the actual value of the first term yet? No. Can we find it? Yes, we calculated the value of p in question a, right? So if term one is three p minus four, then I can sum it two there. What is three times two? Six minus four is two. So the first term is two. All right, so our a value is going to be two. But what do I need in order to find the difference? I need the next term, okay? Because that's how we find the constant difference is when we actually have term one and two, and we can see the difference between those two terms. So in order to get term two, I need to sub p equals two in the second term expression. So four times two is eight, minus three is five. All right, you don't need the next term, but I'm just going to write it down. It is eight. All right, those are the first three terms. <clears throat> 
So now what is that constant difference? Do we see that we are adding three? Again, guys, you actually only needed the first two terms. Okay, because you could just check what is the difference between term one and two. They told us that it's an arithmetic sequence. Meaning that the difference between terms one and two will be the same as between terms. Okay, so you don't actually need terms one and two. Now we can substitute those values in. A is two, the first term is two, plus 15 times three. <laughs> right, what is 15 times three? 45 plus two is 14. Okay, any questions at this point, guys? Right, I'm going to give you some questions to practice. We're not going to do anything else today. We're just going to work for the rest of this lesson. Um, so, did you all get your textbook now? Everyone has a textbook. Perfect. Exercise. So this exercise actually starts on page seven, but the questions that you must do are on page eight. So I would like you to do number three C. Number four D. <clears throat> And some of this is like revision stuff from last year, like the first example that we did yesterday. You guys just haven't practiced any of those on your own. Um, and number nine. So 3C, 4D, number six, and number nine. And that is from the school tomorrow. When did you guys get to have one class? Yes. Okay. You have 25 minutes, guys. You can just finish it about the last time. Okay.